Hey everybody, welcome back and thanks for watching Tactical Weapon Combat Ready. In this video, we're going to be doing a part two of my visit with the ATF. Now, before we get started, I just want to make it clear on where I stand with the ATF. Um, for the most part, uh, I think some of what they do is necessary and good, but all of that could be easily delegated to local law enforcement, things like that. But I do not like or appreciate the amount of power and authority that is given to the ATF. I don't like that there's not a whole lot of oversight or a lot of actions that can be taken against the ATF since they're kind of their own entity. I feel like there isn't very many checks or balances put in place to actually keep them in check. Um, I don't like how they are coming and trying to interpret their own uh, or they're trying to create their own laws and interpret the laws however they want to depending on what administration is in power or who is in charge of the ATF at the time. I think they should be limited in their scope of what they are able to do and what they're able to enforce. I think that they should be restricted heavily on what they're able to do. Because um, I, I mean I think some of what they do is actually legitimately good but they, they shouldn't be given the amount of power and authority that they currently have. And like I said, a lot of what they do could be delegated to local law enforcement if funds were just given to that department to actually run it on the local level. Um, so let's go ahead and get to the actual video. So I just recently had a visit from the ATF and um, I posted uh, uh, some comments that I had about it and talking about you know what the ATF is actually doing under this administration. And uh, I had a lot of really good questions, a lot of good comments on that video, but I also had a lot of people who are very angry with how I dealt with it. So kind of interesting. So we're gonna kind of go over both. I'm gonna make a couple other videos uh, talking about very specific topics that did get brought up in the comments that I think are, are worth, worth going over in their own video. So um, to kind of recap that first video, um, I talked with my ATF agent that came and did a compliancy check for my FFL. And it was a relatively good visit at, in, in regards to, he was pretty approachable, he was, he was a nice guy. Um, I don't like that I have the ATF showing up unannounced um, to do these, but that's kind of what I signed up for. Um, so it was good that it was just uh, respectful uh, for the most part on on both of us. And so some people, I feel like they got kind of mad that I had a okay experience with it. I feel like they were kind of like, I should have been like, screw you ATF, come back with a warrant. You know, I don't know what they expected out of me. Okay. Um, but I was able to ask him some questions because we were being respectful to each other. I was able to kind of figure out what's going on. And he talked about how under this administration, they have zero tolerance for any FFL that fails to initiate the background check for any gun that comes through their shop, which is one of those things where the FFL, your main job is to run that background check. Um, so for me, I was just kind of like, mm, that is kind of a big mistake. Um, and it's kind of the sole purpose for the FFL. So people got mad that I said said that, um, that I was kind of like, mm, I can see why there'd be zero tolerance on that. Because if you, if they fill out all the paperwork, didn't run the background check, and then later found out, oh, this guy is on America's Most Wanted for kidnapping, child molestation, and attempted murder with a deadly weapon. Whoops. Okay. So I mean, it, it that can be kind of a big deal. So, um, so yeah, there was that. Uh, let's see, what were some other comments directed at little old me? Um, oh, I was called a Benedict Arnold, which that wasn't the insult that I think they thought it was, because Benedict Arnold, Arnold has a pretty bad rap. If you really look into him, you'll see that the American colonist elitists actually betrayed him way before he did anything. In fact, he's probably one of the 
In my opinion, the sole reason we actually won the Revolutionary War, because he was the only one winning at the beginning of the war, and he stopped a lot of stuff happening that would have just steamrolled the uh, colonist uh, militias. Okay, So I think he's probably the main reason why we are a country to this day. And he got a bad rap, and he was uh, betrayed by uh, the elitist colonists many, many times. So, yeah, not the insult you thought it was, because I actually like Benedict Arnold to a point. Okay, uh, let's see. Yeah, I was called a turncoat, I think. Traitor. Is there anything else? Probably scum. I don't know. Anyway, so uh, there were those comments there. Uh, and I kind of got into some dialect with them and some like uh, good topics actually came up, came up out of them, which we'll get other videos uh, later on. Uh, let's see. Oh, a lot of people got upset that I said my FFL deal. I mean, sorry, my ATF agent, um, which is kind of weird. I don't know why they got so upset about that. But with every a licensed FFL, um, you have an ATF agent that's assigned to you. Uh, that they would be the ones doing the compliancy checks. They would be your contact if you had to call the ATF. If you had any questions, you needed something clarified, whatever the case is, they would be your contact point. Um, so, I mean, quite literally, he's my ATF agent that is assigned to my FFL. So that's why I say my ATF agent. It wasn't some random ATF agents that just showed up. So uh, there is that. And then there was another person that was saying that I needed to fight the ATF more somehow and that I would probably be one of the FFLs that would turn over all of all of the paperwork and betray everybody, um, which that is actually a concern because it used to be that as an FFL, I had to keep 10 years worth of all 4473s, then it changed to 20, now it's forever. And if my license is taken away or if I just decide eh, I'm not being an FFL anymore, guess who gets all that paperwork? the ATF, which that is a big concern because now are they creating a database? Are they creating records of who has a firearm and what type of firearm and what kind, what model, what serial number? They're going to have all that information. So that is a legitimate concern. Okay. But that guy's comment was, I should be the one that's laying everything on the line to stop it. And so my comment to that was, Hey, you know, for me personally, I'm going to push back but at the same time, you can't expect me to put everything on the line when you're not doing anything for me. And then the kicker in this one is he's from California and they have the state of California has railroaded the FFLs in that state. And it's one of those things where it's like, what did you do to stand up for those FFLs? You're expecting them to lay it all on the line, but you're really not doing anything to support them except they're providing a service and you're buying guns from that licensed dealer. Okay. That's not really sticking up for us. So I was just commenting that a lot of, a lot of these people, this is, this is their job. This is how they provide for their family. You're asking them to throw all that away, possibly go to jail for you while you're not doing anything to help them. So I could understand why some FFLs are going to be like, okay, I don't really have any other choice except going to jail. So here's all this information. So if you guys want the, us FFLs to stand up for you, you gotta be standing up for us too. Well, if you have any more comments or if you wanna insult me a little bit more, you can just do that in the comment section. I would like to get some dialogue going and actually, you know, actually talk about this. So if you could be respectful, that would be nice. Um, in other videos that I'm planning on doing, I'm, talk, I'm gonna talk about, um, the need for background checks if I'm for or against it. Um, if uh, convicted felons who have been released, should they be uh, given their uh, Second Amendment rights back? Um, you know, those are probably going to be the only two coming out of that. I don't know. There might be more. But that's going to do it for this. Uh, don't forget to follow us on Rumble. We are going to have more content on there. Um, and until next time, we'll see you later. Rumble's tactical weapon, one word. We'll see you later.